Greetings folks, oftentimes before I take delivery of a laptop, I have a certain level of expectation before even getting into the device, whether that's thermal performance, frame rate performance, or just laptop life things. I've been doing this long enough to kind of know where things are gonna be before I even put my hands on them. But with this Zephyrus G15 for 2021, I had to throw all that out the window because the pros of this particular device stand out from the pack within its competition. But that does mean that the cons do tend to stick out like a sore thumb. Now this review unit was sent to me by ZTech PC. Now they are known to modify laptops. This one here, completely unmodded. What you see here from top to bottom in today's review, as well as everything I cover on my tested channel, is with the out-of-the-box performance experience and expectations you should have based on what we will cover here today. So with that out of the way, hopefully enjoy today's review. I'm Bob of all trades. Let's do this. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Meet the Asus Zephyrus G15. It has a Pantone-validated 165 hertz Quad HD display with adaptive sync. Came in at 100% standard RGB, 90% Adobe RGB, 95% of the DCI-P3 color gamut at 340 nits. The body is magnesium alloy, definitely an awesome build material making it rigid and lightweight at 4.4 pounds. Inside is a Ryzen 9 5900HS with factory liquid metal, an 80 watt RTX 3070 with traditional thermal paste, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, but half of that is soldered to the motherboard, more on this at the end of the review, one terabyte of NVMe storage, and an empty M.2 to add more storage should you see fit, and a Wi-Fi 6 card. The 91 hour battery at 50% screen brightness lasted over 11 hours at idle, 8-9 to nine hours of real use, and maximum brightness was still good for about 5-6 to six hours, not gaming of course. Now if you need more juice, just close the lid, plug in your 200 watt power supply, and you'll get about 50% charge back in just 30 minutes. Next, let's talk about benchmarks, frame rates, thermals, and fan acoustics on this G15. To enhance your knowledge on how this system currently works, it's important to know how the 5900HS operates during certain conditions. To make this as clear as possible, within the software selecting manual mode exposes two sliders. It's my understanding that SPL is the CPU wattage allowed when combined with the GPU load, and SPPT is when the CPU is loaded by itself. So setting these to their maximum should allow the Zephyrus to perform at its best. So if we take the Cinebench R20 scores from this 5900HS and compare it with the 5800H recently tested on the Electronics Mac G3, they are very close. CPU only stress tests can see the 5900HS pulling up to 60, maybe 65 watts with temps in the mid 80s. Graphic scores for Firestrike, Time Spy, and Port Royal are interesting thanks to NVIDIA's Dynamic Boost. This will allow the GPU to boost past 80 watts up to 100 watts when the CPU is at a low wattage state, something that benchmarks tend to do very well. Gaming, on the other hand, rarely allows the GPU to boost to 100 watts. Gaming performance has been thoroughly tested across two resolutions and several titles to see what this Zephyrus is made of. During most circumstances, you'll see the 5900HS run to a max wattage of 35 watts when combined with a GPU load. What happens initially in a best case scenario is after launching into a game or hitting alt tab and then back into a game, the CPU will pull 40 watts before throttling down to 35 watts. As previously shown, this can be adjusted in the software to 45 watts, and that's where it's normally at, but it did not want to run that high. This could be due to a software bug, or more likely, Asus has this dialed in to this particular set point, considering that the CPU can often hit 90 degrees Celsius within 5 minutes of gaming. Now these thermal results expand beyond the turbo and manual profiles built into the software. The performance profile will lower the wattage to the CPU to around 28 watts and it will decrease the fan acoustics. If you're not picky about maximum performance from this laptop but prefer a quieter device while gaming, this is definitely the profile for you. Just don't expect a cooler laptop since the trade-off here is performance for acoustics. Now I have sunk about 20 hours of just gaming alone on this Zephyrus and I have half a dozen videos on my other channel called Tested where I cover laptops individually on a per game basis as I showcase performance expectations and bottlenecks. Bottom line, thermal performance here can get a bit on the high side pretty quickly. 
Now with four heat pipes laid across the CPU and sharing this with only an 80 watt GPU, I'm not too sure it can get much better than this considering this laptop is only 0.78 inches thin. Now when it comes to fan acoustics, running maximum fans and wattage takes the Zephyrus over 60 decibels, and that's about twice as loud as the competing gaming laptops. Now when it comes to the turbo profile by itself, it is much quieter, but still very hot. Meanwhile, as we scale down to the performance profile, this is much nicer on the ears. If you don't need the CPU grunt, I recommend this profile, but it will limit the CPU to 28 watts when combined with the GPU. Silent Profile will limit your frame rate to 60 or less. Now let me explain this. Titles that push well past 60 FPS should offer a quiet 60 FPS experience. Meanwhile, titles that stress the hardware at 60 FPS or less will just throttle the hardware down to maintain the Silent Profile fan acoustics. This is a trade-off for you to experiment with, and I am happy it is set up this way. Regardless of all the above, skin temperatures of the keyboard are near 50 degrees Celsius, and this can get a bit uncomfortable. Moving on to some of the stars of the show here, laptop life things. Idle fan acoustics were solid for me. This laptop spent nearly half the time unplugged, which is of course a testament of how strong unplugged runtime is, but also my time spent verifying fan behavior. Idle acoustics, rock on with the Zephyrus G15. Now port selection on the right features one USB 3.2, an ultra high speed 2 micro SD card, and a Kensington lock. Then port selection on the left features the headphone and mic combo port, two USB-Cs with display port and power delivery, USB 3.2, the LAN with the tab flipped up, which is really nice to see, HDMI 2.0B, and the barrel power port. One hand opening is dialed in. The hinge and lid work together to prop up the Zephyrus for improved ergonomics and airflow. The power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner for Windows Hello, but it only worked about 50% of the time at best. The large glass Microsoft Precision trackpad is tight with good click symmetry. Now some apps would not open unless I clicked very far left, but other than that, I liked it. The keyboard has great spacing, no significant key wobble, and the keys have about 1.7 millimeters of travel. They're single zone RGB, but with N key rollover. I like this a lot. It respects the laptop as a whole by providing a solid trackpad and typing experience on a laptop that's labeled as a gaming machine. However, Asus has had plenty of time to build these laptops with a webcam and yet there still isn't one. In a world where money is tight, hardware availability is slim, and many are working from home, a webcam would be a very welcome feature. Now the six speaker solution on the Zephyrus sounds pretty good and real time audio enthusiast rest easy as long as you are using the iGPU mode you'll be able to go the distance with this laptop. Audio quality has improved the last week as Asus attempts to mitigate the speaker popping noise so this is how it sounds today. Have a listen. Now let's talk about productivity and content creation, and let me share with you one person's reality for this, strictly for making videos. Starting with the screen, it is a quality panel, but 1440p at 15 inches offers less real estate on my timeline versus 1080p or 4K, and I just can't seem to get the scaling right to offer a good balance between font clarity and what I can see on screen at any given time. If you edit video on laptops, then you know exactly what I mean here. Every little thing helps to speed up workflow. If you are an aspiring content creator about to take the plunge, this will likely seem trivial. Now having a UHS-2 card reader is a real game changer for my workflow as I peel off DSLR footage onto my editing device, but the micro form factor is not as convenient. Now both of these are not deal breakers for me but more of a nuisance that I'm easily able to pick up on. However, the elephant in the room for me is having 8GB of memory soldered to the motherboard. 
if you edit video, then you already know how much better the experience is with 32 gigabytes of memory, at least with the Windows operating system. And replacing the current 8 gigabyte with 16 or 32 gigabyte stick will certainly increase the available memory, but it can also hurt performance since you lose dual channel memory performance once you go beyond 16 gigabytes. Either give us both DIMMs to upgrade or solder all the memory, leaving more space for a larger cooling solution. But if you go with the latter, holding the 32 gigabyte SKU for ransom as you equip it with an RTX 3080 could rub some people the wrong way. Okay, so if you were looking at the Zephyrus as a gaming laptop first, for the money, you may be a little disappointed, right? The frame rate performance, while good, I think you can find better for the same amount of coin. As well as thermal performance, I don't really have a lot of experience with Ryzen 5000 series. This is my second model and I have a third behind the camera. I will investigate that after this review is done, but there's a little bit of heat associated with that. So frame rate performance and thermal performance, maybe not what you would prefer, but Man, like the laptop life stuff, idle acoustics, I can let this sit here all day. I don't hear anything. It's awesome. Trackpad, great. Keyboard, excellent. Like build quality. Like, man, this thing is stiff as a board and it's light, 4.4 pounds. The laptop life stuff, other than missing a webcam, ooh, it is so good. And if you were investing your hard earned money on a laptop, for that as a priority, this, is, this needs to be on your short list. This is a great device, but there's clearly some pros and cons. I wanted to reveal those for you today in this review, and that's it. Check out Tested for more in-depth gaming details on a per-game basis. Otherwise, great laptop, runs a little hot, missing a few things, but man, the pros are spectacular. That's it. I'm Bob of All Trades, and I'll catch you in the next video.